Hi everyone, I'm Ellie, founder of Code of the Future, and today we're going to be looking into the Python module Pi Auto GUI. And essentially, it's a module that is used for automation. So the idea today is that I'm going to show you basically every single command that comes with the module Pi Auto GUI. And the idea is that we'll use what we've learned and apply that to projects. So there will be three awesome projects in this video. Just to make things easier for you, if you want to navigate around the video, I will put timestamps in the description. So make sure you check them out if you want to navigate around the video a little bit easier. This module that I'm teaching you today. I have used in previous videos so in my spam bot and my TikTok bot so if you're interested in those videos I'll put the links in the description and you can check them out after you've seen this video all that's left to say is please can you give this video a big thumbs up subscribe down below make sure you hit the bell button so you don't miss out on any future tutorials and I'm going to put my glasses on and move you onto the screen like usual okay perfect so we are in PyCharm and I guess the first thing that we always do when we are using a module is import the relevant modules so what we will be importing is we'll say import pi auto GUI. Now we could import this as, I guess, pi or anything different, but just for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna keep it as pi auto GUI, just so I guess it's drilled in what, <laughs> what Python module we're actually using in this video. Okay, perfect. So we've imported pi auto GUI. And the first thing I'm going to do in this tutorial video is just show you some mouse functions that PyAuto GUI has, and then we'll move on to do a little project with that. So we'll just call these mouse functions. So the first thing we're going to say is print PyAuto GUI dot size open brackets. And what this does is this prints the resolution of your screen. That fits on perfect. So when I run this Python file what happens it will return this here and this is the size so this is essentially giving you kind of the pixels and, and the, the size of your screen so that when you then go to do some automating things like oh let's move my mouse to this position you can find out exactly what number you know what position that area is here so this is really useful because if you then ask your mouse to move to an area that's beyond these coordinates here Obviously it won't work, it would probably go all the way up into the corner. Um, so this is a really nice way of being able to understand how big your screen is and you know where you can put your mouse on your screen. Okay, cool. So that's probably the first thing that's important with this module because you spend a lot of time moving your mouse around the screen. So that's the resolution of your screen. What I'm gonna do next is print pi auto gui dot position. Okay, so what this will do is it will print the position at which my mouse is at currently. So what will happen is, if I was to click run now, because this is happening instantaneously, it will, it will produce the position of this run button here. So I'll run it again and see what happens. Okay, so we have the size as, as usual, and this here is saying, this is the point at which your mouse was at, so here. So you may think, well, is this really useful, this command, because it's always gonna produce this position here. And the way that we overcome that is we import the time module, which you'll probably have seen if you've watched any of my other videos, because the time module is very, very useful. So what we'll say here is give the Python file some time before continuing. So what that means is we can say time.sleep and input the seconds. So let's say we move it, we want to pause everything for three seconds. So what will happen is Python will read through, you know, this section here and then it will sleep for three seconds, so it won't do anything for three seconds, and then it will do these commands here. So what I will do is, I'll run the Python file, and then I will move my mouse to, let's say, hmm, I'll move it to kind of down here, and I'll show you what happens. So I'll click run, and I'll move my mouse about there, and notice it produces completely different coordinates because I've given Python time to pause the Python file, and then I can move my mouse and it will produce that position. So time.sleep is really useful with alongside this module because it allows you to do things, you know, gives you enough time to be able to do things and, and find out where places are located on the screen. Cool, so this here prints the current position. In fact, I'm probably just gonna put that at the top of here of the mouse. Okay. And I'll do it here just because I've made my screen a lot bigger for you just so you can see it. Um, so we'll just do that and I'll move that across there. Okay, perfect. So there's some basic mouse functions. What else have we got? So this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting with this module. You can actually get Python to move your mouse. So what we'll say is 
we'll put moves the mouse over time and all we need to put is pi auto gy dot move to and then we'll say let's do 100 100 and whatever we put in here this is the number of seconds it will take to do that so if we ignore this argument here it will do it straight away so i'm just going to comment out these prints just for now because it'll probably do things a little bit faster so we'll click run obviously the python file is going to move for three pause for three seconds and then it should move and there we go notice it's moved over here that's 100 100 and if i put in an argument in here so three seconds let's say and i click run it'll wait three seconds and then when it moves it'll it'll do that movement over three seconds so notice how it's gradually moving now if you made that to a thousand seconds it would literally you wouldn't even be able to see it moving it would just move over it'd move that distance over a thousand seconds so that moves the mouse over time so i'll just put in here three seconds so remember um how long it takes for it to, to move from the current position to this new specified position here which is really really cool now we can move the mouse relative relative to its current position and what i mean by that is we will say pyoso.gy and we'll put move rel and this will move 100 100 and we'll do it over three seconds so what this will do it will move wherever the current position of the mouse is it will move relative to that so instead of moving you know to the point 100 100 which was over here it will move 100 100 away from the current position so what i'll do is i'll click run and we'll just comment this section out because it'll move there first so we'll see what this does i'll put my mouse here and see what happens so it moves over three seconds and it moves 100 100 which is 100 that way and 100 down so this is the x coordinate so this would be moving this way the y coordinate so that would be moving down okay cool so you kind of see the difference between move to and move relative it all kind of depends on where you want to move something so when we do a little bit of a project in a minute i'll show you how relative actually is really really useful okay cool okay now we are going to get python to do a perform a click so we'll just put click in here and what we say is pyauto.gy.click okay and there are certain arguments you can put in this click command we will click at the position 100 100 which was up here remember we will say okay the number of clicks i want it to click is three let's say uh the duration three and then we will say the button i will say is left so the left button so it will click kind of like this it'll probably do three so i might just move that to about like 500 500 instead i think that'll probably be more over here so let me just run this and it's going to do all the commands and stuff that we put prior so it's going to move to 100 100 which is the first command we had then it's going to drag relative so move relative to that position and now it's going to move to 500 500 and it's going to click which we can't really see it doing it if it was a double click and we didn't have any kind of interval then it's you'd probably be able to see it a little bit better but that just clicked there um another way of overcoming all these arguments that you put in here you can simply just have something as simple as pi auto gui dot right click there's also left click like that and we also have things like double click and triple click okay cool so these are kind of things that you can use to overcome all the arguments you put in here so you see there are kind of lots of different ways of of doing things with pi auto gy you can simply do the click here or you can do triple click left click right click double click um, instead of specifying in here but it's all all really nice stuff that you can use so what i'll do is i'll just put down here the other ones that you can do so we have double click so i'll put double click in there we have left click and right click and i'll put all of this on my github so that when you have a look you can see all of these different commands which is really really cool okay so i will also comment out the we're here where i've commented out print and things i will leave them uncommented when i upload to github just so then you can see all of the commands you know that aren't in hashtags okay cool so for now i'll probably just hashtag all of this out because obviously when you're teaching a module like this it's always quite hard to just do loads and loads of new things without it then interfering with what we're doing okay so they're the kind of basic mouse commands another thing you can do is you can get python to scroll which is really i think really cool 
so you could literally set up your own you know you could automate your own scroller so say you're reading a newspaper online and you don't want to look you don't want to touch it you know you could do something as simple as that which i think is quite cool um the scroll command is always quite an interesting one really so we'll move on to that now so all you do is just put pi auto gui scroll you specify how far you want it to scroll so i'll say uh we'll say 500 I don't think that's too far so that's how far i want it to scroll so i will click run and i'm hoping it, if i leave it in the middle where it has a temp yeah there we go it scrolled upwards cool so that seems to scroll up so this scrolled up if we put a minus 500 in here i would expect it to scroll down so let's just have a look see what happens perfect scrolls down so i'll just put that in here and say this scrolls up and we'll put 500 and then we'll say scrolls down 500 so obviously this just depends on whether you are moving down your screen or moving up your screen all just depends okay cool and what i might do is i might just put some spaces in here these are mouse functions cool then we've got click and scroll okay cool and then the final thing that i'm just going to show you is mouse up and down this is essentially a way that you could drag there is a python command where you can drag which i'll show you in just a second but mouse up and down means that you can have put your mouse somewhere on the screen you can click down and then you could move to another location in which case it would highlight it or say you're using paint it would drag it so it's quite a nice way of being able to put your mouse down on a certain area of the screen then move to an area and then lift it up always really nice so to do that it's very very simple it's just mouse up and then and then you put the coordinates that you want to move to so 100 100 and we need to specify which button so left i think if we did right i'm not entirely sure what right would do but probably wouldn't do what we wanted it to so let's see so if i do mouse up and down okay cool so this is mouse up and mouse down this is just an example so you would kind of move to this area it'd be the left button and then similarly you'd move to the same area to show you an example of this i'm going to write here so example of mouse up and down and we're going to use paint which i have already here you could literally just use i think i just typed in paint online and i found this so all we're going to do is we have time.sleep at the top here so we've got enough time to move on to the paint app and then you know do our drawing so what we'll say is pi auto gui mouse down and we will have it down at 300 400 and our button will be left we'll then make pi auto gui move to which remember we did at the top of here we did moving to so we'll move it to where should we move it to uh let's say 800 400 so that is going to move just in the x coordinate because the y coordinates are still the same and similarly we'll just say button oh spell button wrong is left perfect and then we can simply say mouse up which means that if you then move to an area so i suppose we'll add on a little move to so we'll move again to let's say we'll move to a thousand 400 now this will happen instantaneously so i'll just show you what happens we will click hang on if i just let me just hashtag out anything else that i've done before it plays havoc with oof, before it plays havoc with my paint <laughs> okie dokie right example of mouse up and down we will run that and i'll move on to the mouse app onto the paint app and we'll see what happens so we moved that's interesting what's happened ah interesting you don't need the button in here of course you don't silly me okay we'll run that again sorry for that getting ahead of myself doing all of these uh, mouse downs okay well there we go did it really really fast so what happened there was it moved to this location it the mouse was down dragged all the way across here and then it moved over here with the mouse up so obviously a way of overcoming you could either put in here you know three seconds for it to move uh, and similarly here so i'll just run that again and i'll just quickly get rid of what's on here so this should do it slower there you go because you've told it to move over a duration not instantly so that's a really nice way of being able to do it it will happen instantaneously but you can leave pauses between the two things so you could just put in here you know time dot sleep three seconds and all that would do is once it's moved to this location it'll take three seconds for the mouse to then move up 
uh, and then it will follow on with this but this is probably the nicest way of doing it because you're moving over three seconds it just makes things a lot neater and a lot nicer when you do watch it instead of it just happening really really fast so that's a really nice way of doing mouse up and down. Um, another thing that you could do on paint is, and I'll just draw it, it's obviously going to be a bit rough, you could move to a certain location, then pause and move again with mouse up and then mouse down, mouse up here and mouse down, mouse up, mouse down. You could do that. I'll see if any of you can do that. I have the code for it, so I'll pop that in my GitHub uh, and you can always check that out as well. Um, but today I'll miss that out in this video just so it's a nice little task for you to do and see if you can do it Okay, cool. So we've done an example of mouse up and down now I'm going to move on to a little bit more of a kind of complicated example And this is something you kind of find ever on Google with Pi Auto GUI It is creating something that looks just like this here So this is what we will do and the way that we do it is we start in this location we will move relative to this position um, and it will continue to move relative while it is below a certain distance between these two lines so we'll do that now and i'll explain how we do it so we have time.sleep up here so we've got enough time for it to, to move i will just put time.sleep one here if you forget that there's this time.sleep this up here is literally allowing us to move on to certain areas without it happening straight away so just remember before you do anything in pi auto gui allowing the python file to sleep for a, for a couple seconds is always useful before it starts randomly moving across your screen if you haven't got there in time Perfect, so we've added a bit of time for it to sleep. Now we're gonna initiate some distance, so about 300. So what we're saying is while this distance 300 is greater than zero, for every kind of left, right, you know, up, down, across that we do around this kind of spiral, we'll make the distance less each time. So obviously this line here is less than this line here and it's less and it continues to get less until you get this spiral pattern. So we'll do that now and I'll show you how we do that. So all we're gonna say is while this distance greater than zero this while this distance is greater than zero just means that when we get to this section here it's not going to continue going in the reverse pattern um, so we need the distance to be greater than zero and while that's the case we'll start in a given position so we'll move our mouse wherever i'll just take this off the screen we'll put our mouse wherever and then it's going to drag relative to that and then the distance will be less and it will move down and it'll do you know the little excuse my poor drawing there but it'll do that so okay we'll start in a given position and we're going to drag relative to that so we'll say pi auto gui dot move dot drag relative and this is going to drag relative to the distance so that's how long that line there is that top line 300 we will say we don't want it to move in any y direction and we will say that the duration shall we do one second i would say just it gives it enough time to move and then we will say that the button is left so we need to i've noticed that a lot of the code online emits this button left and when i tried to do it without the button left it didn't work so i think this is quite key it just means that it knows exactly what button it's going to click when it drags perfect so that's moving across and then we're just going to do the same process but in reverse so it's going to go that way but instead of going x x axis it's going to go the y axis so we'll say pyauto.gui drag relative and this is going to be this is going to have zero x coordinate and distance so 300 and similarly we'll have one and we'll have button is left and that just means that instead of going this distance x it's going to go that way down a distance so a y then we'll do exactly the same drag relative and we're going to go minus distance so it's going to go back on itself no y movement one second and the button is going to be left and then we're going to say the exact same thing by a Pyoto GUI, drag relative. And this is going to be zero minus distance for one second. And the button is going to be left. So you may be looking at this now and thinking, well, this is literally just going to do a, the entire, it's just going to overlap on itself because we haven't taken into account m making the distance less. So that's what we're going to do now. What we do now then is we just add in here, we'll say distance is going to equal distance minus 15. I'm aware that I can minus, let's say 20. I'm aware that I can simplify the notation here, but I understand that a lot of, I, I understand a lot of beginner students are watching my videos, so I'm just making it as you know, easy, easy to understand as possible. So we'll put another minus 20 in there, and all this is going to do is it's going to drag relative, and then the distance will be minus, so it will move, it will move across here, and similarly, then the distance will be minus 20 off the edge, so it means that it won't hit up here, it'll be minus. Okie dokie. So while distance is greater than that, I'm just going to probably put a little time dot sleep two seconds between each of the 
kind of cycles and we will see what happens. Let's run it and we'll just put our mouse here. Okay, so it's moving. Very nice. It's doing a little spiral. Perfect, look at that, how cool is that? We've done a little spiral and it'll take a little bit of time to get there. Look at that. How amazing is that? We've done it. We've done a cool little spiral. Amazing. So something that's worth mentioning with Pyoto GY is they have a fail safe. Now this is really, really important. I'll be releasing another video on exactly how you can do it. Just, you know, two minute video just explaining how it works. But essentially all it does is if you, if it's enabled, I would not recommend disabling it because yeah, just don't, it's not recommended anywhere. Anything you read with Pyoto GUI, it says not recommended at all. So don't disable the failsafe. What will happen is if you're running your you know, code, if say something's happening and it's going wrong, what you can do is you, if you move your mouse to the corner of a screen like that, or down there, or down there, kind of to the corner of a screen, it will notice it's a failsafe. So that is why it's really important to add these kind of time dot sleeps because it means that if something's going wrong with your code, let's say we'll put we'll put four seconds in there now, Say something's going wrong with your code and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is not right. So I'll just put, let's let's add a minus 10 in there. So we've changed it slightly. And you realise something's going wrong with your code. This time dot sleep allows you to get your mouse to the other side. So I'll show you how it works. So we'll draw a new little spiral up here. And it'll start drawing. And let's say, okay, it's going well. It looks good. Okay. This looks great. Let's have a look. Oh, so it's made, it's going smaller now. I don't like that. I've, I've, it's, it's done something that I don't like. So what we do is we simply, and I just realised I put the time not sleep at the wrong, I haven't indented it, which means that now it's, this is going to be fun to try and get it to the corner of the screen. So watch what happens. I'm going to try and get it to this top corner as quickly as possible. It was still dragging. So you kind of see this here and it's still dragging now. I need to lift up my pen. Um, and what happens when I go back onto my Pyth Pyth charm? It says Pyoto GUI failsafe triggered from mouse moving to a corner of the screen. So that's what happens. And I realise let's just put this time dot sleep indented. I made that mistake. Um, and I'll show you what happens again if you have you know time enough time. So we'll do another up here. Okay, so it's doing it now. Let's have a look. Let's see. Pauses for three seconds. I think it was. So let's say okay. Let's have a look. Is it going to do the rest of it right? Okay, it's looking good. Oh no, it's made a bit of a mistake. Let's just put this into the corner of the screen now. So that's going all the way up there. And you have to leave it there for long enough for Py Python to register that it's you know wrong. And then you go back on and it says here, PyAuto GUI failsafe triggered. So that's really, really important. Um, and just something to remember when you are messing around or doing anything with this PyAuto GUI, that's the failsafe method. Just make sure you've got plenty of time dot sleeps in there or enough time for you to kind of abort, abort, abort it because you know Pyoto GUI is automated it's taking control of your screen and doing things itself through code so just be very careful so that's a little bit of a side note i guess um, but really really worth rem remembering and, and mentioning in this video okay cool so we've done the spiral drawing and this is basically everything we're going to talk about in terms of mouse functions so i'm just going to show you one other really really cool project that you can do and this is a tiktok liker so this is a bit of an update on the tiktok liker that i've previously put on my uh youtube um it seems to be hitting off quite well people seem to be enjoying it i would like to say before i go and talk about this please use this you know responsibly if you use this to you know if you abuse this you will get your accounts blocked and yeah you just need to be very very careful you just need to be very very careful so please use this responsibly don't go and get your accounts blocked uh, at your dispense so we're going to do a tiktok liker and i what i'll do is i'll get tiktok open so this is my tiktok here if any of you have tiktok follow me i am posting a lot more videos on here it seems to be hitting off a lot better than when i previously posted i had like 12 followers um but now i'm kind of getting back into it so if you have tiktok then you know i recommend following me because i do some cool technology facts and just keep you up to date with what's going on on my channel so what i'm going to do and we're going to go back on this now i've already used this tiktok liker before which is why all of my tiktoks are liked because i had to test it out before so what the whole idea is that i'm going to show you is what you can do with this really really cool pi auto gui is that you can go onto someone's profile say my code of the future and you can look at this and what i'm going to show you how to do is double tap so you'll like it and then you'll move to this position go to the next one double tap 
go down double tap and you'll like them all so this is why all of mine are currently liked by myself because i've just been testing this out previously on mine um it's a good way of you know if your say your friends are getting tiktok and you haven't liked any of their posts and they're kind of saying oh like my post like my post and this is a good way of doing it um but like i said please use this responsibly um i don't want you to get any of your accounts blocked so what we do is okay cool so we will start by saying time.sleep3 as i said really important just because it allows the python you, gives you enough time to move on to here where you're moving on to i guess so time.sleep3 we're then going to say for i in range 10 so this is going to be the number so range will be the number of tiktoks tiktoks i'm not sure how you spell that you want to like so for i in range 10 all we're going to do is we're going to pi auto gy move to now for my current position on my laptop this will differ so this is why it's really important for you prior to doing this to just test out where your mouse's position is so what i'm going to say is i'm going to move to 450 500 now this position on my screen is literally the center of this tiktok so what's worth remembering if you do this if you write exactly the code that i've got it may not work for your specific computer and that's just because obviously everyone's resolutions are different so what i would recommend doing is before you type in these commands is just figure out where positions are and the the, the way that you do that is right back at the top here prints the current position of the mouse you'll say time.sleep you'll run your python file write this thing here we're obviously without the hashtag you'll move onto the screen where you want you know the area to be so the middle of tiktok you'll put your mouse there and then you'll wait a few seconds for it to work it will print out the exact position of that and that is exactly what you put in there and this is going to be the same for when i move on to this button here so just a bit of a disclaimer these positions here may not work for everyone's laptops you have to kind of test it out yourself if you're a bit confused how to do that then i will release i'm releasing another video on this tiktok like so yeah make sure you check that one out okay so we're going to move to this position here then we want to like it so we're just going to say pi auto gui dot double click so that's going to move here it's going to double click it and then what oh that paused it i didn't double click fast enough it's going to double click it heart pops up and then we want to move to this position here so all we do is we say pi auto gy move to now for my laptop it was 845 515 and I, what i'm going to do is i'm going to just put time.sleep between all of these just because it means that it's not happening instantaneously you can see what's happening so we'll move to there it's going to pause for two seconds it'll double click pause for two seconds move to this position uh, and then we'll probably just put time.sleep2 again for two seconds. In fact, I'll do one second. One second isn't too long. We're not waiting too long then, are we? So once we've moved there, we want to click it. So we'll say left click. So that will move here. Wait a second, then it will left click. So it'll move on to the next TikTok and then it's going to move back to this. So that's exactly what's happening in this for I in range loop. So I'm just going to hashtag this spiral out. I don't want to be drawing spirals in the middle of my TikTok. Okay, perfect. So we've got this TikTok, TikTok liker and we'll see if it works. So let's click run. I'll move my mouse here. Let's see if it works. So it's going to move to the middle of the TikTok. It's going to like it. There we go. It's going to move to that mouse. It's clicked it, liked it, moved, liked it, moved, liked it how cool is that so this is really really handy it's going to do it 10 times obviously because i put for i in range 10 so this is liking my own tiktoks i realize this is a little bit sad but you know what better way to promote my own tiktok account than uh, <laughs> than doing this so yeah that's a really really handy way of being able to you know like your friends tiktoks obviously as i say please use this responsibly i think if you do this a set number of times or say there's a thousands of tiktoks you're wanting to like it tiktok will probably pick up on it so just use this responsibly it's just you know as i say it this is a way of showing you what you can do with it and a really nice fun kind of oh i've spelt like one i just noticed that um it's a fun way of you know seeing what things you can do with this pi auto gy but as i keep saying please use responsibly and make sure you keep putting time dot sleeps in a little, maybe a little, a little bit longer than one second just so you can you know fail safer if need be okay cool so those are the mouse functions now i'm going to show you just some keyboard functions there aren't really many on this module so i'll just put here keyboard functions and all it really does is it allows you to type out things so if you see my spam bot this is what we use and all you write is you just put pi auto gy 
dot write and let's say we want hello so it's going to write hello so what happens if i just hashtag my tiktok liker out and i click run and i put my mouse here it should write hello perfect there we go so it's written hello and that's something that you can do you know spam bot i guess um another thing to mention is you can put pile to gui dot press and this will press the buttons on the keyboard so this will press enter and then i suppose i could put pi auto press let's say space and what this will do is it will write hello it'll press enter and then it'll do a space so wait three seconds remember there's a time dot sleep three seconds at the top writes hello goes down one and clicks a space cool so there's a lot you can do with this press there are a lot of buttons and commands you can put in here obviously right you could literally write anything you wanted you know you could take a script um a python script of a text file that i showed you in my spam box if you're interested in that then check that out um but yeah so there are quite a few things you can press i'll put an image on the screen right now of all the things you can put in press some of them don't work i've tried to kind of volume down on a mac and it hasn't worked but it may work for windows obviously this pi auto gui is compatible with quite a few like linux um, is compatible with Linux, Windows and Mac but it might just be a case of certain things may work on a Mac and it may not work on a, on Windows but it's probably the, the other way around it's more likely to work on Windows okay so there we go there's some keyboard functions uh, and I'm just going to show you one final little mini project that I thought was quite cool um, it doesn't really work as well as kind of expected but it's just a way of showing you how you can use this to you know automate things so we're going to go over here away from my TikTok this is where we have no internet and most of you will be familiar with this game it's the dino game and you just press the space bar when you want to you know move up and usually if you press it for like every one second it seems to work quite well so all i'm going to show you now is a way of just automating the dino to, to press the space bar every kind of second or second and a half kind of thing obviously doesn't mean that you're going to win the game i will be releasing a video on how you can just overcome the dino game and how you can just hack it and you know you don't you just get a major score so that will be coming up on my youtube soon but for today i'm just going to show you how you can press the space bar kind of every second and automate this dino okay cool so what we're going to do is just put dino game chrome because obviously it's on chrome chrome all we're going to say is time dot sleep again just so you remember that there are you know time dot sleep is important if you're trying to if you need to fail safe anything so time dot sleep we're going to say for i in range i'm going to say 20 all we're going to say is pi auto gui dot press we're going to press the space bar and then i'm going to say time dot sleep and i'm going to say 0.5 seconds every time so it's going to press the space bar it's going to wait 0.5 of a second then press the space bar and it's it's quite it's quite funny really you know it's obviously not gonna make you get that far but it's just a way of showing you how you can automate it so let's run and let's see what happens so it's going to wait a couple of seconds obviously and now we hope that it will press the space bar there we go and it's doing the space bar every 0.5 second i think we're yeah we died literally pretty much straight away but it's going to keep going because i've said 20 so it'll probably stop soon it'll probably have done 20 soon died again uh, we're not having much luck are we with this probably might have a bit more luck if you change the number of seconds but yeah a really really nice way of showing you how you can automate in python and the final thing that i'm going to show you with PyAuto gui is the screenshotting so you can actually screenshot in PyAuto gui and very very simply PyAuto gui screenshot and you're going to just put in here the kind of description of the, the screenshot that you want. So what will happen, it will save it to this dot, the folder that you're in. So I'm in my code of the future folder uh, where my Python file is. And if I just say, we'll, we'll call it screenshot. And if I run this right now, what will happen is PyAuto GUI will screenshot the current screen and it will save it as screenshot. So it is right here, if you saw that pop up, put dot PNG in there. So we'll just delete that and we'll do that again okay perfect let's run it again and it should save it as a png which means we can view it um adding that is really helpful there we go cool so screenshot.png will open that up and there we go and i can do the same it's on my desktop go to the future screenshot perfect it's done a screenshot so equally i could if i just cross off that i could click run i could go on to this dino game i could wait a couple of seconds because obviously it's time.sleep and then it should do produce a screenshot of it i'm hoping it will override the previous screenshot it may not we'll just have to have a look okay has it done it there we go perfect and again here 
screenshot perfect so that's a, just a finalizing thing with this Piotta GY really really cool you can screenshot and I suppose this is helpful if you're you know maybe watching a video and you wanting to get a good thumbnail and you know you can't be able to check through them all so you just get your python file to screenshot your video every five seconds and hopefully you know you'll have a picture where you're you know doing something good i mean that's completely different but i guess it's a, an element of how you can use the screenshot technique in pyoto gui but i guess that is everything that i wanted to show you you've been able to do three really kind of cool uh, little projects and i will be releasing shorter videos of those on my channel so if you didn't quite understand anything in kind of in this code i'm going to be making more in-depth videos showing you how you can do those on my channel so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss out on those videos so i guess the final thing to say is i hope you enjoyed this video if you did then please give it a big thumbs up and comment any kind of video ideas you want to see in the future from me on this channel subscribe down below and hit the bell button so you don't miss out on any future updates that i'm posting on this channel i'm planning on releasing a lot more videos i have a lot of time over summer now uh, before i go on to do my masters so my plan is to release literally videos every week and and hopefully give you some good quality content so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of those videos and i will see you all in the next video